Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about T4 bacteriophage. <coughs> we all know about uh, what are bacteriophages, that bacteriophages are those viruses that usually infects bacteria and they replicate inside the bacteria. Some of them can replicate and kill the bacterial host and can uh, then uh, leave outside. Then some of the viruses can also stay there for longer period of time in a dormant stage, right? <coughs> Now, T4 bacteriophage is another very important model bacteriophage or a model virus to be studied. Now, the structure of T4 bacteriophage, here you can see the electron microscopic view and here it is a schematic presentation for the T4 bacteriophage structure. It is made up with uh, three major regions. One is the head region, second one is the tail region and uh, the third one is the collar or neck where the head is attached to its tail. Okay. So, let's begin with this T4 bacteriophage. Okay, so uh, what do we mean by this? This So, actually, this T4 bacteriophages are among the double-stranded DNA bacteriophage. Now, usually, the DNA viruses that we know of, the double-stranded DNA viruses, among them, all of these bacteriophage usually resides. And among them, we are having three major variety of phages like myoviridae, sifoviridae, and podoviridae. Now, we have already talked about sifoviridae, and the example of one sifoviridae is that lambda phage right because we have already talked about lambda phage you can find a video in my youtube channel about lambda phage now they are having a tube like structure that's why the name come as sifoviridae like the siphon right it's a greek uh, word of siphon that means a tube right so it is a long tube which is flexible in nature and also non-contractile on the other hand this t4 virus belongs to the group called myoviridae now why they are called myo we know that myo is a greek term that name muscle Right? Now we know that muscle means contraction. Muscle, muscle means contraction, right? Contraction. Contraction is associated with muscle. So here, <coughs> these T4 phages are having the tail which is contractile in nature. That's why we call them as uh, the myoviridae or, or they, belong, they are belonging to the group myoviridae. Except for that, there is another type which is called podoviridae. Here we can see this picture. It is just uh, in Greek word, it, it means foot. So you can see it, it, it actually, uh, it is having, uh, replicating the is image of a foot, right? So it's a short foot-like structure. That's why we call it a podoviridae. So there are the different types. Myoviridae, which is having contractile tail. Sifoviridae, having flexible tail. And podoviridae, which is having the structure like a foot. Okay. Now, the, we can use this T4 as a model system, right? Now, in this case, this T4 can be used for, for uh, the molecular biology research in many different ways. For example, we use them for the recognition of nucleotide as genetic material. We use this T4 viruses for the discovery of mRNA and also for the finding of triplet nature of genetic code, right? Now, usually, we can also use this T4 viruses as a model particle uh, for uh, defining different genes in mutational and recombinational functional analysis. Okay, because as these T4 viruses are very small particles, they are having very sh uh, short stage of DNA, we can use them in various experiments. That's why they are very much handy to molecular biologists. Now, let us talk about the structure of T4 virus. So, T4 virus is having majorly four different parts here actually. Majorly three, but here it is depicted as four structural part. One is the head, which is slightly elongated. The head here it is slightly elongated. Elongated head. It's not a kind of compact, it's a kind of stretchy in both this top and bottom directions. Okay, so it's an icosahedral head, but it's a slightly elongated. Okay, icosahedron. Okay, elongated icosahedron. Now it is having a tail region, which is another very large region. Now the tail here or tail seed here is simply it's a contractile, contractile tail. That's why we call them. Uh, we are placing them in the myoviridae group, right? And there, uh, this head is linked with this tail via this neck uh, region here, which is present in this region, the neck region. Okay, and at the bottom we are having the base plate and pins that are coming out. Okay. So, these are the four, four different regions of this T4 virus. Now, if we look at the head in detail, what we can see is an elongated icosahedron. We have already uh, seen that. Now, it is made up with multiple copies of protein. 
in all the body or all, all the different regions of this T4 patch body they are made up with several different structural proteins that are made or that are transcribed and translated uh, by this late genes you know late genes because if, when you look at the genes or the genomes uh, that are present inside this head which is a double stranded uh, double stranded DNA genome if we find that there should be many different type of genes for example early genes late early genes and then late genes so these are the genes now among these late genes are those genes which are responsible for the production of this head or tail and different regions like that okay and the proteins here uh, that we can find as 23 24 hawk sock uh, there are different proteins like ip123 alt peptides 2 7 and all these different types of proteins can be made okay now in head, uh, here the 20 24 different proteins are required to make or uh, fully construct the head. You can see also that the, there are some important ingredients that are popping out from each of this uh, base or pentane base, right? As you know about the structure of icosahedron. Now it is having a six involved in the pro head formation, which is uh, the immature head that is being made during the packaging of the DNA inside this viral head, right? And five uh, proteins are required for the DNA packaging. C are required for complete and stabilized head, right? Now, in, there is another important uh, protein that we have seen that is HOC, a highly antigenic outer capsid protein. So, it's called highly antigenic outer C4 capsid protein, right? And SOC is smaller outer capsid protein. Now, these highly antigenic capsid proteins that are coming out, these are something unique about the T4 phages that are not being seen in case of lambda phages, okay? Now, let's talk about in neck. The neck is the region which is acting as a joint region from the head with this tail, right? So neck is made up with a kind of cylindrical arrangement or circular arrangement like proteins and the proteins present here usually protein 13, protein 14 and WAC. You can see here uh, in the schematic presentation of this neck, this blue colored ring is, is a neck. So it's a ring like arrangement and this is a tail, now it's contracted. Now here what we can see, if this is the head region and this part is uh, from this green region is the tail, so we, we can see the neck entirely it's kind of build up with protein 13, 14 and fibrin. Fibrin is required to make this kind of ring like structure throughout this region. Okay. Now let's talk about the contractile tail. Now the contractile tail of T4 phage is made up with a, a base plate. It's actually co composed uh, of two important things. One is a base plate at the at the bottom. Sometimes people also put the base plate in a uh, completely different region, but uh, we uh, allow it to put it in the same region. So its tail region is made up with this complete part. And first is the tail uh, part itself, and then the base plate, which is slightly modified and slightly elongated here, uh, right? Slightly broader. So in this case, this tail is made up with a base plate and a two slender co-cylinders. Right? So what do you mean by two slender co-cylinders? Co-cylinder means it is made up with one core cylinder which is a hollow tube like structure like this. And surrounding this part, surrounding this region, there is there are arrangement. Arrangement of other proteins which are called the contractile ring proteins. Right, so these are the construction for this contractile rings. Okay, now the ring that are that are found in the outside is a contractile in nature because we can see here if this is the arrangement or the spherical arrangement of this contractile ring fiber that is kind of spherically surrounding this hollow tube at the bottom middle. What you are doing that if they are they are having the way or region for rotating, so they can rotate like shafts, right? <coughs> excuse me so they can rotate like shafts so as they can rotate like shafts so due to this rotation uh, due to this rotation they can actually contract the situation so due, during this kind of rotation clockwise or anticlockwise they are kind of contracts and as a result of this contraction the inner hollow cylinder if we look at here the inner hollow cylinder here kind of pushed inside the host cell right that's the machinery of how they inject their dna inside the host cell it's, it's very similar like the injection or the syringe to, to put the injection in, inside our body, right? Put the drug inside our body. So if we look at the outer cylinder or seed, it consists of 144 subunits of a protein called GP18. And if we look at the inner cylinder, it is made up with again 144 subunit of GP19. So GP19 present inside 
and GP 18 presents outside. Okay. So in both the case, they are made up with 144 subunit of the same type of proteins. Now let's talk about the base plate. Now the base plate is composed of six gene products, namely 5, 27, 29, 26, 28, and 51. You don't uh, need to memorize all of these things, but you should know what is base plate. Base plate is again arrangement, uh, so <coughs> arrangement of different proteins to give a base. Uh, to give a kind of uh, what you know as a base to that virus so that they can sit or stand on its own okay and also a kind of other proteins uh, which are called the fiber tail fibers kind of coming out from this base plate proteins and those those fibers are also important because those fibers uh, with the help of those fibers they are kind of hooked onto the host cell and attached to the host cell and there are some other proteins or hook-like structure that, that are also coming out from the base plate from the bottom which is helping them to be attached or adhered to the host cell in tight interactions or physical interactions. Okay. And also I forgot to mention one thing is that uh, is that here you can see this GP, <coughs> GP5 and GP27. So GP5 and GP27, these two proteins. This complex attached to the tip of the tube and they are having a lysosome-like activity. Now this lysosome like activity is very important to degrade to degrade host cell. Okay. Now if we look at the tail fibers and pins, the short tail fiber is a timer, a trimmer of GP12 and GP9, which forms a socket like structure as you can see here. <coughs> so if we zoom into in this case. What you can see from the base plate, the fiber is kind of coming out, and the fiber is made up with four different regions GP34, 35, 36, and 37. So, here we can see these regions are attached uh, at the middle of this GP34, 35, and 36, 37 complex. There is a presence of a triangle like protein here, and this protein is also important because it is helping the fiber to bend from this particular location. Okay, and both at the end of this, they can easily, so you can see at the end of it. We are having GP37 attached and a kind of proteins which are making this very much thinner and as a result of that it can penetrate the host cell pretty easily. Now if we look at the genome of T4 bacteriophage, so this is the genome of bacteriophage T4 and the uniqueness of bacteriophage T4 genome is that it is having two important properties. One is they are terminally redundant. And second thing are they are circularly permuted. What do you mean by circularly permutation? That means the circular formation of the phage can be easily possible due to kind of complementary bases that are present in both the terminal and they are called terminally redundant. That means usually there is a sequence of about 1.6 kb is repeated in both the ends during the packaging. That means let's say here if this is the whole genome when the, it is getting packaged it is kind of cleaved from uh, different sections so that as you can see in both the ends in this in this example 1 2 starts at the end also 1 2 in this case starts with 3 4 ends also with 3 4 and in this case it will start with 5 6 so it will go and end up with 5 6 somewhere so this is called the terminal redundancy of this t4 genome now this terminal redundancy is maintained because as they are having this kind of terminal redundancy they are also circularly permuted permuted that means they, are, they can easily form a circular DNA structure out of this single uh, out of this linear DNA due to having the same type of genes and DNAs at both the terminal of our genome of the bacteriophage. <coughs> now the gen genome actually comprises of 300 probable genes and majorly of three different type of promoters. One is early, another one is middle, and third one is a late. So early promoter is called promoter earlier, promoter E or PE, middle one is called as PM and last uh, late one is termed as PI or PL sorry not PI, PL. Okay, so the early and middle genes encode for the functions of DNA replication for, and regulation of expression of different late genes and the late genes encode head and tail components for the fast particles because late genes are usually responsible for the production of all structural structural proteins okay 
So more than 40% of the genetic information is needed for the synthesis of T4 structure. Otherwise it cannot be produced. So this is a basic arrangement of different. So this is uh, the structure of the genome of bacteriophage T4. That we can see there are different regions for coding the structural genes. This whole regions for the structural genes from head, tail, head raw, uh, neck and collar, then tail base plate. From this part of the section, it requires for DNA metabolism, membrane formation, tail fiber, nucleotide metabolism, and so on. And among all these different proteins, GP proteins are important for structural purpose, and DEX A, DEN B, and MOT, these proteins are important for other kind of purposes. Now, usually, this T4 phage won't require in lysogenic and lytic switch because they are not temperate phage, so they are having less complexity than the lambda phage genome. And the genome are uh, uh, usually uh, for this T4 phage are 80 rich in nature and it usually contains modified bases like 5 hydroxymethyl cytosine rather than cytosine. So here you can see this is a modified version of cytosine. It is methylated. After this methylation, it is getting 5 hydroxymethyl cytosine, the 5 HMC. And also the majority of the hydroxyl methyl groups are glucosylated in this case as you can see okay so this this is another important feature of the genome it is made up with AT reach so, it, so so for the replication it, it can start with uh, from any different position because it mostly AT reach in nature so it is easier to uh, detach both the strands and then it is made up with this modified bases which are required for for preventing themselves against the host cell activity Okay, so that's kind of it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.